um, I think this teaching will be helpful. Um, I found a verse in Isaiah 65:22 that says, "For as the days of a tree, so shall the days of my people." Uh, so I would say, just our lives are just like a tree. Our tr our lives, our Christian growth is exactly like a tree. There's a lot of similarities. When I first met the Lord, I just really wanted to hug a tree. I just felt such an affinity with them and um, with all of creation. I have this theory that, that all of creation, trees and animal life and mountains, everything was in the heart of God. He thought about it. He meditated on it. And then he spoke it into being. But because it came through his mouth, his breath is in his words. Jesus said, my words have life. Uh, John actually wrote and said that Jesus was with the Father as the Word in the beginning, and by him all things were created, and without him nothing was created. And so Jesus is in creation, and so that breath, that Word, that life, when people go for a walk in the forest, they can feel something of that life. And they say, when I'm out there in the mountains or I'm on the ocean or on the beach, I feel close to God. I think, I think they're feeling something that was in his heart. And that's why we feel like we are resting when we get to water and mountains just do something powerful for us. But trees, Trees, it says that trees of the field shall clap their hands. Uh, Paul said that they're groaning, waiting for the return of Christ. There's a lot of similarity with trees. And so the same one who created the tree, which is made up of little cells filled with sugar, we're made up of little cells filled with sugar. That's why your blood is sticky. Too much sugar is not good, but we have to have some sugar. We are, we are just like a tree in, in many, many respects. Um, trees need soil. They need sunlight. Uh, they need water. We need all of those things to be healthy as well. Um, oftentimes when Jesus would talk about the kingdom of God, he would talk about trees and seeds and uh, he talked about the birds resting in the, in the, in the branches. Um, there's a lot of similarities. So I thought we'd look at this today. I think there's some good things in here for us. One way that we're like a tree is a tree has seasons. And I think we have seasons. There's something, there's something when we think that our life should always be the same, we will be disappointed because nothing stays the same. And it's important that you have seasons. So you have seasons that look very fruitful and seasons that look very empty. And you need both. In order to be healthy and balanced, you need both. There are seasons in life. Um, the tree has a root system and has uh, bark and leaves, all of that is for one purpose, and that is to produce fruit. And so our root system and, and how, how we deal with difficulties, all is for producing fruit. Everything that happens to you is to produce fruit. If something good happens to you today, that's to produce fruit. If something bad happens to you today, that's to produce fruit. The, the whole existence of the tree, the leaf and the, the roots and the bark and the, the, the seasons is only for fruit. Some kind of fruit, some kind of reproduction. We're designed to reproduce, not just naturally. As a disciple, you have to make disciples. When you leave this, this program, you should be thinking about who can you disciple? Who can you take further 
in God. Who can you tell what God has done in you and you help them become disciples of Christ? <coughs> so a tree is built to reproduce. The seeds are in the tree. The seeds are in the fruit. It's an amazing system that God has created. Um, so it's all about seed, growth, and multiplication. And that's true of our lives as well. Anything that can stop the, the growth of a tree can stop our spiritual growth. Because the, the, the parallels are the same. The trees that grow the fastest are the, the least useful. So if a tree grows very fast, it might be good for paper, making paper, um, maybe making insulation. But the tree that grows slowly and experiences difficult conditions, difficult winters, difficult uh, dry conditions, those trees are the hardest and those trees make the best furniture. You never make furniture out of the, the uh, you don't make lasting furniture out of the cheap wood. You make lasting furniture out of the hardwood. So in northern New York, we produce a lot of furniture because our trees, our trees endure hard winters. When you go south, down into Georgia and Florida, uh, I, I've flown from Florida all the way to Penyan, and most of it is, is fast-growing, cheap trees that can grow in bad soil. They're mostly pine trees. They don't even have leaves. They have needles. And they, they produce something from these trees, but they don't make furniture. They don't make, like here we, have a, we had a big gun factory because most of the gun is made out of wood and, and they produce it here because that's where the wood is. Uh, bowling pins you know, for bowling alleys and bowling lanes, they don't make them in the south. They make them in the north because we have hard wood. What kind of Christian do you want to be? A fast-growing Christian? or a Christian that grows slow and endures hardship to produce, so you're, you're, you're the most useful in the kingdom. So if you've gone through a lot of hardship, a lot of difficulties, maybe God has a purpose for you that is more useful than some Christians who just seem like to grow quickly, but they don't, they don't produce very much. When you cut a tree in half and it falls over, and if you look at it, and there, there are people who can do this very, very easily. They're, they have even little tools to do it. You can count the rings of the tree. The rings go around and around, and you can look at those rings <clears throat> just like a map, and you can count how old it is. You can look at the rings and say, oh, this, this year they had a lot of water, a lot of snow. This year, a very small ring, they didn't have very much water. It was a difficult, it was a dry year. And then you look at and you see a bullet hole. <clears throat> and then you see a little disease spot in some of the rings. And you realize, oh, that, that tree had become sick and healed itself. You might see pieces of, of barbed wire that are stuck in the tree. You might see where a fire got too close and you could see where it burned the tree. If we cut you in half and you fell over and we looked at you, what would we see for your growth rings as a Christian? We'd see wilderness times, we'd see dry times, we'd see revival times, we'd see times when you got too close to the fire or maybe a bullet, a bullet went into you and you had to be healed from that or an arrow. And we're in a, we're in a, a lot of war. It's, for me, it's not constant warfare, but 
I, I've been hit with some arrows and been shot at. But we could look at your life and see how you grew as a Christian. And, and God can grow you just like he can grow a tree. And, and there might be times when the rings are really big. Maybe it was a time of a lot of watering and a lot of, a lot of the word was put in you and good church meetings. But then you'll go into a time where you see a ring or two or three that aren't very big that you went through a dry time. And we grow just exactly like a tree. Here's another thing, and this is, this is what I wanted to bring you to. All of that to say this. A lot of Christians become discouraged because they think they should grow like this. Upward and going forward continuously and just always going up. But my Christian life is more like this. It's more like circular. It's not like this. It's, it's circular like the rings on a tree. And so, for example, uh, the five disciplines that we've been talking about, I won't be very good at praying or reading my Bible or fasting or resting or giving. And, and I cry out to God and I say, Lord, I want to be a disciple. I want to be better at these things. Give me grace. And next thing you know, I'm able to pray and I'm able to, I feel like I'm in love with my Bible again and I feel like worshiping and I feel like fasting. I feel like I'm getting some spiritual traction and I'm really starting to grow. So, so here nothing's happening. Now I'm starting to grow. I'm doing really well and then I start losing that grace again. I, I can hardly pray. I'm not praying as much as I should. And I cry out to God and I say, Lord, I don't like this feeling. I don't like this condition, help me. And he pours in more grace. Maybe he makes Bible verses come alive or there's a sermon or a book or something that makes me come alive. And I start taking off and now I'm growing again and I'm really growing and I even feel like now that this is my spiritual life and I can even look down my nose at others that aren't growing as well because they don't know what I know, they don't have what I have. And then I start losing that grace and, and I get down where I can't hardly pray and I cry out to God. And next thing you know, I'm starting to pray again or fast, I'm starting to spend time in, my word, in the Bible. And then I keep coming around and, and that is my Christian life. My Christian life is not like this, where I never struggle. In fact, I, I complained to the Lord one time. I said, Lord, I don't like, I don't like my Christian life. It's, it's, it's not consistent, it's not upward and always moving forward. And he began to show me that my life is more like a tree, which is circular. And he says, this is how I grow a tree. This is how I grow you. That it's, it's seasonal and it's circular. And it's not, it's not that he doesn't give me grace to be consistent. It's just the way I grow. It's the way he grows me. If I, if I have just constant growth, after a while, you just think it's you. You think it's because you're so smart or because you're so disciplined. It's really helpful, actually, to go through a time when the grace isn't there and you have to press in for it. You have to move toward it again. You have to seek God again. That's how he grows us. That's how he grows me. And I was complaining, thinking I'm not a very good Christian. I'm not, I'm not like other Christians that must never have dry times and difficult times. But he's saying, no, I'm growing you. What if this is, what if this is all it is until you die? Well, I can do that. I've done that many, many times. I'm like a tree. In Revelation, in the book of Revelation, in Paradise, Revelation 22.2, it says that there's a river. 
And beside this river is the tree of life. And the tree of life has 12 different kinds of fruit, each in their own season. And so what I think the tree of life might look like, and he says the season in, in heaven lasts, lasts for one month, even though there's no real time in heaven. Paul, or John, when he saw it, he saw the tree go through a season from nothing to blossom to fruit to losing the fruit and go back to leaf and then blossom and then fruit. He saw this happen and it happened in a month. When I read that, I realized my life is not one dimensional. I don't just have one part of my life. My Christian life is made up of many parts. And so I sat down and I wrote out all the big areas of my life, my marriage, my, my ministry, um, my relationships, my friendships, and, and, I, and my, uh, the different callings I have. And I wrote it out, and it just happened. I wasn't even trying to be spiritual or super spiritual. It, it just happened. I could write out 12 different areas of my life. And one area, I said, you know, one area is just beginning. To, it's like new. It's springtime. It's exciting, it's new. Then there's another area of my life that has lots of fruit. And then there's parts of my life, there's nothing. It's just a leaf. <laughs> and I thought, my life, my life is like the tree in paradise. It's not one tree with just one kind of fruit. It, it's all 12 seasons at the same time. So one part of my life is in winter and another part of my life is in springtime with a little blossom, a little hope. Another time, part of my life just feels like it's just summer. It just looks like nothing's really growing. It's just a long, hot summer with no real measurable fruit. And then other parts of my life are just hanging with heavy fruit. But if I was in charge of me, my life would only be fruit. It would only be harvest. It would only be September or October when the fruit is heavy. That's what I like. I want fruit all the time. And he says, well, it doesn't work that way. In order to get that fruity season, you have to have leaf. You have to have springtime. You have to have winter. Winter is a time for root growth. Winter is a time when you, you really get stable and you really grow deep and if you don't do that there's there, the fruit isn't very much at all so my life is more like the tree of paradise i have different parts of me all growing at the same time so there's my my marriage might be in winter and i have to say god i, I don't like this i don't like this condition of my marriage I, help me and I want to study and I want to grow and maybe get a seminar that helped me in my marriage and that's good. And then there's another part of my ministry that's really growing and another part of my ministry that's nothing. And maybe another part of my ministry that's just a small bud or my friendships, my relationships, they might be in all different conditions. But that's normal. That's, that's just the way it is. And we want only one condition, only one season. We don't like winter. We don't like summer. We don't like, we just want fruit. And he says, well, I can grow a tree to produce beautiful fruit. Can I grow you the way I want to? Will you let me grow you? So I wrote out 12 areas of my life. I have them right here in front of me. Why don't you write out 12 areas of your life? <clears throat> what are the 12 areas of your life? If you give me your list, I'll give you my list. See if you can think of 12 areas. Amen? Amen? <laughs> 